triglycerides. So every day I get questions online about should we treat triglycerides? What about the triglycerides to HDL ratio? What about this with triglycerides? What about that with triglycerides? So let's talk everything triglycerides from the point of view of a cardiologist and someone who is really, really good at treating lipids. I mean, that's what I do for a living. I'm a double board certified cardiologist. 90% of what I do every day has to do with treating heart disease. And most of that has to do with high cholesterol, high triglycerides, and what have you. So triglycerides needs to be divided up into two general sections. You have really high triglycerides. We call that familial hypertriglyceridemia. These are people who have triglycerides over 500. We're not going to talk about that. We'll talk about hypertriglyceridemia in a different video. But people who have super high triglycerides is a completely different story. That's a genetic thing and needs to be treated almost immediately because if you don't lower triglycerides quickly, the person can end up with pancreatitis and ultimately could even end up with pancreatic cancer. We're going to talk about the normal general triglyceride problem. These are triglycerides, you know, everything from zero up to 499. And a lot of times we see patients with triglycerides of like 150, 250, 350, et cetera, you know, in that range. These are the kind of triglyceride problems that I want to talk about today. Now, there is obviously some genetic component to it, but not as much as like obviously hypertriglyceridemia. Hypertriglyceridemia is that incredibly super high triglycerides. So people ask me, you know, doesn't low triglycerides mean you're more better metabolically healthy? Doesn't it matter? Don't you want to lower it? Don't you want to do this? Don't you want to do that? So it really, really depends. Let's look at this from two different kinds of ways. There's a lot of nuance. When we have tried to lower triglycerides with only medications, there have been medications in the past, like fibrates, like certain things that target basically only triglycerides. Fish oil, for example, you know, fibrates and fish oil come to mind right off the top of my head. There are some other experimental things that we have tried. When you try to lower triglycerides only with medications, you do not end up with a reduction in cardiovascular disease unless it also came along with a lowering of LDL cholesterol. And the risk reduction is always commensurate with or equivalent to the amount of LDL cholesterol lowering. So we know for every one millimole, you lower LDL cholesterol, which is like 38.6. For every like 38 milligrams, you lower LDL cholesterol. Let's say 35 to keep it simple. So if somebody has an LDL of 135, you lower it to 100. Then let's say like 70, 30, 60, whatever. Every like 35 milligram per decibel lowering of LDL cholesterol, you get about a 22 to 25% reduction in MACE events or cardiovascular endpoints. So when you attempt to lower triglycerides with a medication, let's say like fibrates, you put somebody on fibrates, their triglycerides drop quite a bit, you know, generally speaking, but they get like a 10 milligram per deciliter lower LDL cholesterol. They're, they do get a risk reduction, but it's equivalent to the amount of risk reduction they got with that 10 milligram expected risk reduction from lowering actual LDL cholesterol. That's what we see in the data. There are other medications and other things being tested and tried now to see if there is a way to lower triglycerides and whatnot. But so far, anything that lowers triglycerides only has not shown significant cardiovascular reduction unless it also lowers LDL cholesterol. All of the risk reduction comes with the lowering of the LDL cholesterol only. Now, you could argue that FACIPA or EPA is a different case, but those people already have super low LDL cholesterol already. Those people are maximized on everything and their LDLs are, you know, in the 40 to maybe 70 range, depending on what they have. Adding EPA to those people in a study that was somewhat questionable, not everybody agrees with, you know, there's a big disagreement in the cardiovascular community if, if the placebo was really inert, was it really a placebo or was it actually increasing inflammation or increasing cardiovascular event rates. And that's why the EPA looked better. So with that one study aside, EPA or eco acid did 
show that in addition to already lowering people's LDL cholesterols down to very low levels and you know being optimally maximized on everything else, adding a little bit of EPA seemed to reduce reduction further, risk reduction further. The relative risk reduction was about a 20%-ish, 26 maybe, and the absolutes were not uh, very much. But that's not the issue because these people are already maximized and there's a lot of question as to whether that study really mattered. The biggest difference where we see this is in phenylfibrates. You put somebody on a fibrate, let's say they're already maximized on everything else, their LDL cholesterol is still like in the 150 to 250 range. Now what do you do? You put them on a fibrate, you get their triglycerides down even further, but you get a slightly also low reduction in LDL. Now it's not a huge reduction in LDL, they don't lower cholesterol that much, but the risk reduction is commensurate with the reduction in LDL cholesterol. So that's one side of the equation, using medications to lower triglycerides. Not that beneficial in terms of cardiovascular outcomes. However, and there is a big however, and then I'll tell you at the end how I treat triglycerides. The big however is that if we do lifestyle modifications to lower people's triglycerides, there is a significant reduction and improvement in outcomes. What do I mean by this? So let's say somebody has an alcohol problem. They drink a lot of alcohol. That is why their triglycerides are high. When they stop the alcohol, if their triglycerides come down, a lot of other things improve. Obviously, it's not just from lowering triglycerides, but a lot of other things improve, and they do see a risk reduction in all things, all-cause mortality, cardiovascular event rates, cardiovascular mortality, pretty much anything that the alcohol itself worsens. Same thing with diabetes. If somebody has uncontrolled diabetes or pretty high triglycerides due to diabetes, when we get the diabetes under better control, all of their risk reduction comes from that. So when we get people's blood sugars down to a more controlled, more normal level, you know, up to a certain point, it is kind of a sigmoidal curve as well, or let's say a J-shaped curve. But up to a certain point, when we lower people's triglycerides by controlling their diabetes better, they actually do have risk reduction. Their cardiovascular event rates go down, their cardiovascular mortality goes down, all-cause mortality, everything drops, you know, kidney disease, all of that improves mainly due to actually controlling their blood sugars. Same thing with other things. If somebody's quite obese and it's the obesity that is driving the high triglycerides, same thing, you know, then, then losing weight, however you want to do it, cutting calories, whatever, will reduce triglycerides. Um, some people say, well, I just did a carnivore diet or a low-carb diet and I reduced my triglycerides. So first of all, there's no target for triglyceride lowering in and of itself. No one cares. But if you did a new diet and you lost a bunch of weight, you lose 20 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, whatever it is, GLP medications, SGLT2s, you know, all of the weight loss medications, you know, I'm an obesity physician as well, but we put people on medications to make them lose weight or they do on, go on a calorie restricted diet, exercise, whatever it might be, triglycerides go down with the body weight reduction, they will see an improvement in outcomes, mostly driven by the improved cardiometabolic health. When you are more endurance, you have better endurance, you've lost 50 to 80 pounds, you can do more, you're more active, absolutely, your triglycerides will go down, your body weight goes down, the risk of cardiovascular events, all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality also goes down, mainly because you improve your cardiometabolic health in general, mainly driven by the weight loss. Same thing with kidney disease. A lot of times, and this may be overblown a little bit, but some people have really high triglycerides due to bad kidney disease. And the kidney disease could be driven by hypertension, diabetes, all the other stuff we kind of mentioned. If we get that under control and improve your kidney outcomes, improve your kidney function, all of that, you will see a reduction in risk, also commensurate with the improvement in kidney function. So that's kind of how I want you to think of these. While there's no target to treat for triglycerides only, like if somebody comes up to me and says, Doc, my LDL cholesterol is 40, I'm great shape, everything's fantastic, I feel great, but my LDL is like 150, what can I do? There's no real goal of therapy. We're not really going to want to treat it down. You know, there are exceptions to this rule, and I'll get into some of the nuance, but we're probably going to just say, you know what? Your LDL is fine. Everything looks good. You are not at increased risk. Your insulin, you know, no insulin resistance. You're insulin sensitive. Let's say your A1C is like 4.4, 4.7, something like that. We're probably going to say to this person, 
not a whole lot to do. Leave it alone. We're not going to put them on five rates. We're not going to put them on EPA. We're not going to do any of that. Um, we're just going to say, you know what? Everything is optimized. Your risk of a cardiovascular event or death or anything is really, really low. Your, L, your ApoB, LDL is like 38, 35, 40, whatever it might be. Not a whole lot to do there. If somebody comes to me with their triglycerides that are elevated, let's say, you know, in the 150 again or 250, whatever, somewhere in that range, but they're overweight, their diabetes is out of control, they're, they're a drinker, you know, they have all of these things, we're going to attack those problems first. We're going to say, look, you need to be on my exercise program, drallo.net slash exercise. You need to be on a diet. Go grab my heart healthy cookbook. It's a unique cookbook. You, you, you choose your calorie deficit. You calculate it out in the first chapter. Let's say it says you got to eat a 2,000 calorie a day diet. You flip to that chapter, eat 2,000 calories a day, make breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, whatever in a calorie deficit, and you will actually lose weight. Huge improvement in outcomes when you lose the weight and the triglycerides come down. If you need to improve your kidney function, you go see the nephrologist, whatever they do, whatever they tweak, you know, control your blood pressure better, diabetes better, whatever. You have diabetes problems. You come to me or go see an endocrinologist, whatever. We get your diabetes under better control, whether that's through weight loss, eating differently, eating less, however you want to do it, medications, diabetes gets better, triglycerides get better. So it's a multifaceted approach. There isn't one single way to do this. Now, where the nuance comes, you know, we say in medicine, there are some things that are well-known, scientific, here's what you do, but then there's the art of medicine. Let's give you this case, for example. Slightly overweight male, let's say six foot one, you know, you can use a female as well, it doesn't really matter. Overweight person, six foot one, let's say 230 pounds, you know, they don't have a lot of weight to lose, but they could lose 40, 50 pounds if they really, really wanted to. But let's say they're like, let's say 35 pounds overweight, their A1, A1C is 5.5. Their triglycerides are like 350, maybe 280, you know, somewhere hovering in that range. Their LDL is below what it needs to be. It's like 55, you know, for a diabetic under 70 is fine. They have one other risk factor, you know, under 55 is fine. They've never had a cardiovascular event. They're 38 years old. This is where the art of medicine kicks in. Now, what do you do? Now you got to use your brain a little bit. We already told you all the easy ones. When somebody has an A1C of 5.5, they're insulin resistant. You know, they're not normal. You know, 4.7, 4.4, you know, 4.8 is fine. They may have a triglycerides. That their triglycerides are absolutely high. They're doing everything else right. What do we do in this case? We probably will have to put them on a calorie restricted diet, have them lose as much weight as they can. But let's say they lose those 35 pounds and they only got like five or 10 more to lose, aren't really losing it. We could put them on medications to help them lose weight. But one technique, you know, for example, that you could use, they're already, let's say, maximized on everything else. Everything else is fine. You're not going to put somebody on a statin whose LDL is already at goal and you just need a little bit of triglyceride lowering. You could. You know, it's indicated and it's probably first line, but if this person's LDL is pretty well controlled, maybe they already on, are on a statin or they're like, no, doc, you know, I really don't want to go on a statin. So what, what can you do? In this case, something like metformin would not be a bad idea. It's cheap. It's generic. It's been around forever. It does a fantastic job. Metformin can lower their insulin resistance because at 5.5, while you're not severely insulin resistant, you're pretty resistant. You know, you're 0.2 points away from diabetes, prediabetes, what have you. Metformin in this case would be a fantastic option. And we've done this with quite a few patients. Their triglycerides drop, their ApoB and LDL cholesterol may even drop further, or at least they're not. At it. So metformin is fantastic because it works in four different ways. It has, it has mechanisms of action that we don't even understand. For those of you who are like, why are you putting them on medications? We got to put them on something natural. It comes from the French lilac. So who calm down people. It improves your insulin sensitivity. It reduces your insulin resistance it makes you poop out more sugar, basically more carbs, and it reduces gluconeogenesis, you know, creating more sugars in your liver. So it works in multiple different ways. Those are the four ways that we know of so far, but it's a fantastic medication. People who were on metformin 20 years ago, even for just a year or two, are less likely to have diabetes today. And it was equivalent to people that did exercise therapy at that same time 20 years ago who only did it for a year or two. So metformin is a fantastic option in this case when you think you may not have any other options. So this is how a cardiologist approaches triglycerides. I can't just give you an answer and be like, here's what we do, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
We don't do that. It depends on so many things. But the one thing I don't want you to do, and I see way too many patients like this, I get a patient who has all the traditional cardiovascular risk factors. They're hypertensive, they're overweight, they're diabetic, they're everything. They're on phenofibrate and because their triglycerides were 260 at one point. And if you look at them, their A1C is nine, you know, they're obey, they're overweight, they're obese. And their family doctor or, or anybody, could be another cardiologist, whoever, just put them on phenofibrate and Vesepa, put them on EPA and phenofibrate and said, hey, we'll get your triglycerides down. That is not how you do it. You're going to try You're going to make the numbers look prettier, but you're not helping this patient at all. You're not fixing the diabetes. You didn't help them with the weight loss. You are literally just treating the numbers to treat the numbers. So don't be one of these people that just puts people on phenofibrate or EPA or you know whatever just to make the numbers look good. They need to be on a statin. If they're diabetic and their numbers are off, they're being, they're not treated for that. You know the LDL is high, the ApoB is high, especially if they're diabetic and their A1C is nine. Treat their diabetes, get them to lose weight. Do all of those things first. If they lose the weight that they're supposed to lose, and and they might not because it's hard to lose weight. But with the new medications for diabetes, it's not that hard. Get the weight off. Get them on the proper diabetes medications. Get their A1C down to a reasonable number below seven, whatever cutoff you use. I don't know. Everybody's different. For me, I like to be a little stricter, but I don't want to also cause hypoglycemic episodes. So treat their numbers down, get their A1C to an acceptable range where they've maximized everything. They're on statins. They're on everything. If their triglycerides are now still high, you could stack on other medications first, Zetia, PCSK9s, Bepidoic Acid, you know, all go through the, the uh, algorithm. I, I put up a video on here on how a cardiologist treats cholesterol. Go through the algorithm. Statin, Zetia, PCSK9, Bepidoic Acid, Fibrates, EPA. Sort of in that range. While the last two don't actually treat the LDL or the ApoB, if they have a triglyceride problem, you would still kind of go through that. Now, like I said, if you've listened to this whole thing, you know there's a lot of nuance. There's no like one answer that fits everything. But that is about how you should approach it. Now, if you're not sure, send the patient to a lipidologist, send them to a cardiologist. We definitely know what to do and at least we can help you, but maximize everything else. If they're diabetic, get that fixed. If they're overweight, get that fixed. If they're drinking, get that fixed. If they kidney disease, get that fixed. Like you Treat all the stuff that is known to cause high triglycerides, maximize the other medications that actually do improve outcomes and if they still have high triglycerides, then we can add the medications that would bring down triglycerides only, like the fibrates and EPA, and then see what happens. In that scenario, those medications would probably help improve outcomes slightly, not as much as obviously the big, you know, five or six medications that we have. So I hope that helps. If you like stuff like this, you should probably join my community. We talk about this stuff pretty much every day. Um, if you use the code one month, you can get in there for free. Don't tell, don't tell everybody. Um, but it's a fantastic community. We meet every week on Zoom. It's a live weekly uh, question and answer session. We address your lipids, your labs, your longevity. We have a community. You could post your stuff in the community. You get an app. It's a free app. You get in there. You post stuff. I answer questions and read them every day. That is generally the approach we use to triglycerides. And if you like stuff like this, I will catch you in the next episode. Peace.